boobs and fart jokes. AD on iHeartRadio. Hey, how about that? Rock stars checking in, listening to the show. The uh, dudes and American authors have uh, joined in the conversation on Twitter. That's kind of cool, right, Funkhauser? Touched by greatness. Yeah. Me and uh, me and American authors go back a little bit uh, of a ways. Like a, a buddy of mine who I'd known for years. Like just they have that song, we "Best Day of My Life," right? They they have "Best Day of My Life." They have the well, the song that I I got to know him through was this song called "Believer." Oh, and um, yeah. yeah, and so <laughs> this guy that I'd known literally for a bazillion years since we were kids, we were both like signed when we were teenagers, uh, got enormous record deals and nothing ever happened with him. But we remained friends through the years and he became a producer and I wound up in radio. Um, but he sent me some music and he was like, dude, you're going to love this band I'm working with. And uh, I was just like, don't tell me what I'm gonna like like when someone tells me i'm gonna love something that immediately like i've already decided i hate it just because i'm just like no no i'm not gonna love it don't presume uh, to know what the hell is going on and then i got the music and i was like uh and i wanted to hate it just because he told me i was gonna love it Uh, this guy chef and i was like oh god this is really freaking awesome and uh I uh, I sent it to uh, the powers that be at the Sirius station I was on, Alt Nation, and the powers that be were just like, yep, this is awesome, your ears are not broken, and he was right. It was on the air like the next day, and in a month, they were signed, which is a crazy story because it doesn't usually happen like that anymore. It's like a story straight out of the 90s where that amount of airplay leads to this you know situation where multiple record labels are bidding on them because the song's just that freaking good. And what usually happens in that situation, what usually happens when you get like this spark is that there's an enormous bidding war and it raises expectations when the band eventually gets signed to just the unreasonable level so the moment it doesn't turn into the second coming of christ people get worried and back away and credit to american authors and credit to this guy shep who sort of like i I guess he produced them and i think he's now sort of their manager as well and the label that they went with it was played exactly right the guys got a chance to grow and grow and the strength of their songs got a chance to really shine through. And uh, as best I could tell, they were nurtured to the point where, I don't know, just like a year and a half later, they're more or less taking over the world and it couldn't happen to a bunch of nicer, more deserving, more talented and uh, more musically accomplished guys. Like the vast majority of them in that band went to Berkeley College of Music. Like they could shred for days. They just have the good sense not to show that off on their records. But yep, thank you, American authors, for checking in our brush with greatness. Hey, this is why you should uh, fire off knuckle children before you go to the holiday party. Are you? Oh, you're not going to go to the holiday party, are you, Funkhouse? I'm going not to this one, but to another one. Right. I'll be at yep. a holiday party. You're going to go to your girlfriend's holiday party. Yeah. With a bunch of uptight religious types. And fondue. And fondue. Well, then, uh, here's why you should pleasure yourself before the company Christmas party. Your company Christmas party, as we've established, is filled with landmines. And a psychotherapist named Lucy Burrisford has a strategy for eliminating at least one of the big ones. She says, before your company Christmas party... <laughs> Uh, what's a delicate way of putting this? Well, we haven't been delicate about how we've been putting it up to this point. So uh, let's just say it. Yeah, she wants you to handle yourself vigorously. <laughs> That's a polite way of saying it, right? Fire off the aforementioned knuckle children, or if you're a female, double click your own mouse. Her advice is mostly for women, actually. We think it applies to men, too. But the theory is pretty simple. If you take care of yourself beforehand, it'll calm your loins and your psyche in general and help you make a more rational decision on whether to get it on with a coworker. And if you have a thing for a coworker, and if you were thinking of using the party as an opportunity to make a move, by self-pleasuring beforehand, you can focus on flirting at the party and not escalating things, which is a smarter long-term play. Uh, what do you think, Funkhauser? Does it make yeah. sense? Have you ever gotten yourself into a situation you shouldn't have been in uh, at a holiday party? Yes. <laughs> yes, I almost made out with my music director. 
R- really? Yep. What, uh, what market? Uh, My what, engaged what music director. <laughs> yeah. what, the, what, what market was this? Two. Or can you not say? It was It was in Los Angeles. It was oh, for it was a music Angeles? radio station. And, uh, <laughs> and I should not have done that. <laughs> <laughs> were there uh, were there repercussions? Did it damage your career or her career? No, in the long run? no. It was just the next day. Hey, we just we did not do that. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> really? You actually had that conversation? Yeah. Yeah. Does that ever work? Yeah. I mean, very were there quickly tensions? though. Was it? No, no, no. Because I was like, was uh, I was much um, a much younger funk than I am today. So it was uh, a <laughs> learning experience and uh, a good one. Uh huh. But yeah. A one, once and never again. And then a couple years later, my big mouth told somebody. And uh, <laughs> you mean got, sort of like you're doing right now on the radio? Oh, yeah. We're on the air, <laughs> are we? Crap. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I try not to find myself in those situations because I have no gate. There you go. Right. <laughs> See, you're supposed to learn those lessons and make those mistakes in like Oshkosh, Wisconsin, or, or some teeny tiny market of no consequence whatsoever, so you can leave your problems behind when you, in your glorious radio career, head over to a, a different, larger, more substantial market. Um, you're not supposed to do that in market. What's LA market two? When you're at a pl- when you're working at a place that's uh, the brass ring. When you're working at a place that is the brass ring of uh, <laughs> the radio world, not necessarily the greatest move. Not, not the place Everybody you else be is making doing it. Formative mistakes, you know. And that's the other thing too, man. I, I don't know. I, I'm such. A, I'm not a rule follower, but I'm so paranoid about. I, I guess this is why I'm never going to be driving that, uh, driving that nice of a car, living in that nice of a house, because I don't have that 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 arrogance of self. You know, I don't have that out for my own thing. I don't have that inbuilt narcissism that so many radio folks seem to have where I'm willing to do whatever the hell I want to do and F everybody else. Like, I'm always sort of cautious about hurting other people's feelings or stepping on people's toes around the office. And then they could give a crap. They're out for themselves, and that's pretty much it. And nothing bad ever seems to happen to these people. Do you notice that? People that flaunt rules and authority never seem to get into any trouble. In fact, they seem to rise to positions of power. Have you noticed how this seems to work, Funkhauser? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. It's like a, a strategic game of chess. Yeah, yeah, no, it's an interesting one. Speaking of a game and playing it properly, uh, did LeBron James cause an international incident by putting his arm around Kate Middleton? That's what people are saying. Prince William and his wife, Kate Middleton, they were in Brooklyn this past Monday night, just gone by. They were watching the Nets take on the Cavaliers, and after the game, they met LeBron James, who might have caused an international incident. LeBron put his arm around Kate during a photo op, and some British newspapers say that's a breach of royal protocol. They're comparing it to uh, 2009. You remember when, uh, do you remember when Michelle Obama hugged Queen Elizabeth and we're like, (gasps) oh no, we don't do that. Um, Yeah, we didn't exactly go to war over it, but it sounds like this will be a similar non-issue because Will and Kate pride themselves on being a new breed of royal or inbreed of royal. Look at Prince Charles' ear. Somebody in the royal family knew someone in the royal family. A palace spokesman recently said, uh, when they're meeting people, they want to have a conversation without the other people worrying too much about how to address them. The message is, address them in whatever way you feel most comfortable. But, like, people are all up in arms about it. Mostly here. (laughs) Mostly here in America are like, oh, LeBron not putting his best foot forward for America. He put his arm around the princess. What the hell are we to do? Mm. Ugh. It's been kind of a lighthearted show, and I was going to lead with this story today. I kind of feel like I have to get to it. So excuse me while I uh, flush the vibe of the show directly down the toilet as we discover the darker parts of humanity. But did you see um, You see, this Mississippi teenager was burned alive? Uh-huh. Yeah. Burned alive. Protesters, stay in silence. Family members of this teenage girl who was burned alive on Saturday night. At this stage, they're desperate for answers. This girl is called Jessica Chambers. She was 19. She was found burning near her car, also engulfed in flames. Flown to a hospital in Memphis. Didn't make it. Died. 
There's some early autopsy reports. Apparently she died from severe burns, covered 98% of her body. Her mom said, they ripped away everything I have. She left to go clean out her car and was going to go get something to eat. Never made her home. Her dad, Ben Chambers, fully believes that his daughter was purposefully set on fire. He said when the fire department got there, she was walking down the road on fire. The only part of her body that wasn't burned was the bottom of her feet. They squirted lighter fluid down her throat and in her nose, and apparently they knocked her out. She had a big gash on top of her head. And with her dying breath, she might have sent investigators down her killer's trail. Her father said she told them who'd done it. Now, understandably... They're not going to say what Jessica said, and they're not going to release the details about how she died. A whole bunch of people are being questioned by detectives. No arrests have been made. Her car, any potential clues inside, charred, burned. Really rough to get anything out of it. They did find a cell phone at the scene. Had you heard of this? Had you heard of this 19-year-old girl? Suspected that lighter fluid was squirted down her mouth, up her nose, and she was set on fire. 19-year-old girl. Chances are you haven't heard of it. Chances are it hasn't been brought to your attention. Why isn't this making national news? Why don't we care about it? Why are vultures not descending upon this, calling this a travesty of justice and seeking to profit off of it, off of this unbelievably horrific and violent act? Why is this not receiving the attention? Because she's white. Apparently, having your skin charred black, not enough to garnish sympathy from race pimps like Sharpton and Jackson. And I say that not to lessen the struggle anyone who isn't white goes through because of their color of skin. I say it to point out the fact that the people that descend upon horrific crimes against humanity like this one and attempt to paint them and paint tragedies as part of some race war are doing it for profit and money if they cared about humanity they'd be there at the scene of this crime but you know what there's no race baiting to be done and no money to be made stop listening to these people get the hell along thank you so much for hanging out